Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Afsha and I'm going to be teaching you the exact tips and tricks and the study techniques that I used to pass my licensure exam over here in the United States of America. So this video is all about five things that I wish I knew when I was first starting out as a foreign graduate pharmacist. And I these are the things actually that I wish somebody had told me when I was first starting out. Um, but now I'm making this video for all my fellow friends who are in the same position that I was a few years ago. And um, I'm going to try my best to help you guys. And if there's anything that you would like to know or if there are any queries that you would like to be answered, you can um, comment down below and I'll try my best to uh, reply to all, the, all those comments that... Um, that I can in uh, five things that I wish I knew as a foreign graduate pharmacist and um, topping the list is asking your university to deliver all the required documents to ESE as soon as you graduate and this is very important because uh, from for my university my university uh, releases degree uh, exactly after one year after you graduate so that means you have to wait for one year to uh, get your final transcripts or your degree uh, so that you can start applying for jobs and if you move to another country like I did it it gets really difficult so uh, one of my friends was kind enough he actually arranged everything for me he did all the paperwork and he spoke to the administration office and all the stuff, all the technical stuff and um, when I actually went to Pakistan to uh, receive my documents uh, I just had to sign a few papers and I had to review them and boom, I had my degree. And so I got my degree exactly about six months uh, before my graduation date. So though graduation is a very important um, event of our lives, it was for me too, but uh, I couldn't attend my graduation because if I had... Uh, if I wouldn't have gotten my degree uh, six months earlier, I wouldn't have been able to sit for my exam over here and um, continue my career or get my license over here in the United States. So yes, uh, I know it's a it's a big sacrifice, but uh, it's something that you got to do. So I never had the chance to attend my graduations, but um, you guys can ask your administration office at the university and they will um, further guide you about it. But it's, it's always the best idea to get the university uh, to deliver your uh, important documentations to ECE because uh, ECE also takes time to review the documents and then they send the confirmation report to uh, NABP and then NABP gets back to you that um, they, they send you an approval in your mail and then they tell you, okay, um, hey, you're you're good you're all good to go and you're uh, you will be able to sit for your fb fbgee exam so yeah okay so coming back to the second point is getting a technician trainee license and technician trainee is like a, a pharmacy a pharmacist personal assistant over here so uh this guy is uh, pretty much able to perform um some if not all the duties of a pharmacist technician or a pharmacist so um, a pharmacist, te a pharmacy technician trainee can uh, fill in medications. Um, this guy can um, check the computer database for patient records. They can take basic phone calls. They can talk to, uh, they can talk to suppliers. They can even, they can label drugs. They can check inventory. They can update inventory and all those technical stuff. So this, uh, getting this license give you, gives you a particular amount of exposure that is required when you're stepping into a completely new country and a completely new state and it helps you to get familiar uh, with the law and uh, with the way that pharmacy works over here in the united states and also in canada so yes and this is the best part of this license is uh you don't have to study for this license or you don't have to pass any exam for this license this is uh something that um you can google too you can google uh how to uh get a pharmacist technician trainee license and um there's a website that can guide you through uh navp and um you just spend a few bucks and you get the license it, it takes about four or five weeks uh to get the license but uh it usually comes in about a month or so and um it, you're good to go but um uh, too good to be true so here's the catch so uh this license is only valid for two years 
this means you can work as a technician trainee you can apply for jobs in a pharmacy as a technician trainee for two years only but in my view uh two year two years is uh approximately just the right time to get your um pharmacist uh not pharmacist but fpgc foreign foreign graduate equivalency exam done and your toefl done to get your pharmacist internally license so you won't have to uh work as a pharmacist technician trainee anymore in in two years so yeah two but this two years gives you a very good amount of time to start learning things and start getting used to of the process uh of pharmacy in america so coming coming to the third point third point is getting to work into a private pharmacy so you got your license you started searching for jobs and let's say you see a couple of jobs in the big names and i know we get very excited when we see jobs in cvs or kroger or walgreens and all those big names but trust me when i say this i have worked for cvs i have worked for kroger and i have also worked for a private pharmacy and i am i am i was blessed that i worked for a private pharmacy when i first came over here to the united states because um they might be paying you less but uh the the amount of growth and the amount of learning that you get from private pharmacies is far 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 better than the amount of learning that you get in the big name because reason for that is uh these these big names they have a lot of prescriptions per day so let's say um a big name pharmacy is filling 500 prescriptions a day on the other hand the um smaller pharmacy the private pharmacy is filling about 100 prescriptions per day so in the big name pharmacies you don't even have the time to take a quick bathroom break yes they keep you they make you uh keep standing for about eight hours straight and uh plus the overtime if there's any so in private pharmacies on the other hand when you're filling about 100 prescriptions or maybe 50 prescriptions who cares uh in a day your job would be to memorize start memorizing the drugs so let's say you're filling tylenol so you can start memorizing what the mechanism of action of tylenol was and then over here they are uh, given a piece of paper with each medication so the, that piece of paper contains all the uh, basic side effects and the basic drug interactions that goes to the patient so you can actually review those drug interactions and those side effects and trust me when you when you do this on a daily basis it gets stuck in your head and you can thank me later when you're sitting on uh, your fpgc exam and you know half the answers because this is exactly what happened to me at least and apart from memorizing the drugs it actually helps you to get familiar with the pharmacy law over here in the united states uh, depending on what state you're working in this makes me come to my fourth point which is learning so learning uh, from the job that you're uh, doing as a pharmacy technician trainee in the private pharmacy so uh over here in the united states uh they have different laws every state has different law so i am in texas so i worked as a pharmacist technician trainee in a private pharmacy and uh this guy was very very nice and i actually consider him as my mentor and if he's watching this video um um, I I will always be thankful to this man for uh, making me learn so much. So yes, it's it's not hard to get into these uh these uh private firms. You can just just go ahead and ask them to volunteer if money is not an issue, or you can work as a part time job at any other firm and um take a few hours from your day maybe a few hours on the weekend and go to a private pharmacy and just shadow the pharmacist for a few hours over there because this will help you in the long learn run and this will make you learn the laws and the drugs which is going to help you in your um fpg you see so yes so uh this is the fourth point that learning um drugs memorizing the brand names memorizing the generics if you're forgetting it from your graduation and memorizing the laws because pharmacy laws are pretty pretty different over here in the united states so once you start working in a pharmacy and uh when you see all those questions about pharmacy laws and um uh some basic questions about the uh, dispensing of 
like C twos or C threes or what what are the protocols of C fives and how do you how do you um how do you document all the drugs that you're giving or uh is is dextromethorphan allowed to be given to a minors or with anybody without an id card so you wouldn't have to rely on bookish knowledge for all these questions that i'm saying you will you will be having an idea if you if you have worked in a private pharmacy or or if not in a private pharmacy in any pharmacy you will be having an idea of how things are done and more idea if you're working in a private pharmacy so yes this was my fourth point and uh fifth point would be uh getting done with toefl before you get your paperwork for fpgc so uh, by paperwork i mean uh, before you get approval to sit for fpgc when you are waiting for approval from uh the national boards of pharmacy in america this is the mistake that i made and I wish somebody had told me this before, but um, I have seen people who have passed uh, FPGC on their first attempt and they have given sixth and seventh attempts of TOEFL and they have still they still haven't passed. And um, for those who don't know, FPGC is valid for FPGEE, my bad, is valid for two years. And uh, if you fail to pass uh, your uh, TOEFL within this two years time, your FPGC certification expires. And then you have to go through the same process all over again. And you have to sit for FPGC again. And you have to actually give the exam all over again. So it's always a good idea to um, get one thing off the list <laughs> as soon as possible. And uh, TOEFL is, uh, it's not hard, but uh, there are certain requirements. Um, for uh, licensure exams, like um, TOEFL has four sections, right? So uh, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And all these four sections have different score requirements. And for those who don't know, again, failure to get even one one mark in any of these four sections requires, requires you to give TOEFL all over again. And this is the reason most of the students fail. So yes, um, it's it's a good idea to uh, get done with TOEFL as soon as possible. And if you're waiting for approval uh, from the board uh, while you're studying for your FPGC, just um, go ahead, get the books, start studying for TOEFL and get the TOEFL off from your list. So once you uh, sit for your FPGC and you pass your FPGC, you have the certificate in your hand and you don't have to uh, wait for TOEFL to pass before getting your FPGC certificate. So yes, these were uh, the five things that I wish I knew as a foreign graduate pharmacist when I first came to the United States of America. And I will be coming back to share um, more tips and tricks and more study techniques. And I, I can also, I will also be teaching uh, a few important topics from FPGC. So for those who are interested, please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. My name is Afsha and I'll see you next time. You all have a good day. Okay. Bye-bye.